Right. In no particular order, as people can tell that are watching these videos, am I going to do videos? I am going to get guns coming in, and we're going to just generally try to talk about guns. What I'm going to do with the videos is I'm going to try and show people unusual guns and more uncommon guns and more uncommon specifications with length of barrels and chokes and bits and pieces. What I've got today is a Beretta 627 EEL. Now I've seen a few 627 EEL's, they're quite sought after gun. Single trigger side by sides are quite sought after. What makes this gun particularly rare is the fact that it's a 20 bore. As I say, I've seen a few in 12, 20 bore. This is the first gun that I've seen. This gun has come in for a service. I've asked the customer if he doesn't mind me doing a video. He's more than happy to do it. I've looked up the age of this gun and it is a 1986 gun, which is a year older than me. Just generally going to show you a few things, a few features that are on it. We've got 70mm chambers. We have got quarter and a half choke. And I'll show you some of the chokings that are on it. And we'll talk a little bit about the proof marks for the age date. The Germans have got their own system for dating a gun. The Italians very very helpfully have got a dating system that's put on at proof house whatever uh, whatever manufacturer makes the gun they will put the relevant proof marks on and they will also put a date stamp when you start talking about the english guns we never uh, we never the english gun trade never took up upon that idea until it was quite late about 1940 it might have been a bit earlier than that, 19, we'll say 1925, something like that. But clearly the English gun trade made stuff a lot before that, so it's the proof marks that you have to start to understand. Now, with the guns, the, the history, as I keep mentioning, means so much to me. The finding out about the guns, the learning about them, the learning about the, the engraving, the the styles there's just so much to learn so with the videos i'm trying to show people some unusual guns some guns that i know are unusual that when i search the internet uh, especially youtube i can't find any videos on them so i like other people to look at them as well so with this little 627 can you bring the camera over here Paul, please with this 627 you've got a raised rib it does flatten out right towards the muzzle you see that mate yeah right towards the muzzle and i'll open the gun pull and i'll point the muzzle towards you also if you look very very closely can you focus in yeah well we're focusing on the front of it yeah. on the on the muzzle itself you'll yeah. see that there's some little lines in the bore can you see right around the bore tiny basically pull yeah. that's been Teagy multi choked from the factory. Yeah, I think we might just be able to see them in it. Yeah, if somebody looks very hard, they can see. Yeah. So that's been Teagy multi choked because the customer feels the quarter and a half from the factory wasn't quite what he was after. So we've got a stepped up rib. Can you see it just here? Yeah. We've also got a single trigger, which is very popular amongst the side by side guys. We've also got a selective single trigger pull. So one dot will shoot right barrel first, left barrel. Let me just pick the phone up. Two sets. <laughs> Let me just pick the phone up. Two sets. Ah, you got it. Good, good. Sorry, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm coming. So now with this engraving pull, this has been engraved and then it's been hardened afterwards so it's annealed basically which will make the engraving harder it was harder wearing basically yeah. this gun how much time mate yeah, it's took about five minutes <clears throat> okay this gun was made in 1986 which was about the height of the beretta 
uh, their quality, basically. Not to say that the quality isn't there now, but it isn't quite what it was. Lots of things are like that, Paul. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if you looked under the bonnet of a Ferrari, it wouldn't be as good as it once was. Yeah. Now, I'm, the reason I'm going from gun to gun is Beretta very, very kindly have marked this gun. Can you see that? Yeah, I've got that, yeah. So it's a model 627 EEL. They very kindly marked it to say what gun it was. And Beretta tend to do that with most of their models. If it's a DT10, if it's an ISC, if it's an SO, they'll write it on the gun. Yeah. With the browning stuff, they do and they don't mark. I'll flip it round the other way, Paul. Sorry, not the camera. <laughs> so here we've got the engraver. Yeah. Now, I haven't done the research. Please, if you watch this video and you feel you want to do the research and, and email me and tell me, but as I said with the last couple of videos, Paul, this will be the master engraver. This will be the man that designed the pattern. The man that actually engraved it, he will not have his name on the gun. We've got, with this one, Paul, which isn't quite as sought after, is we've got an English splinter forend on it, which is slim, not a beaver tail. And we've also got a straight hand English stock. Okay, we've got a very, very nice piece of walnut wood on it. Yeah. And the depth of the figuring that's on this pole is of a very high quality, basically. Now, one of the other things that people don't tend to notice is the size of the guns have got bigger and bigger. When you had a, a 16 bore, when you had a 20 bore, the guns were different sizes. The reason that they were different sizes, Paul, is because, again, the people that were making them knew the size that they should be. Uh, going backwards and forwards, but let me just take the gun apart. And we've got four in there. And if I put the barrels down here, Paul, and I'll just yeah. show you. So this here, this is the weight of the barrels, okay? Grams 1420, something like that. If yeah. you put them on a scale, focusing in, mate. 1420 yeah, grams. If you put these barrels on a scale, that is what they would weigh. I will tell you why in future videos they do that, but today we're not going to do it. So we've got 70 millimeter chambers. Yeah. These are your chokes, basically. They work the same way as they do on a, uh, a multi-choke itself. You've got four notches for quarter, and you've got three notches for half. You've got the fact that both barrels were choked from the factory. You've got the fact that it's P. Beretta, that's his mark, and you've got serial number. So the part that we're interested in, Paul, see this AP? Yeah. That is a that is a proof. Uh, that's not proof. That's a date code. If you type into Google Italian shotgun date code, it will yep. come up. You've got finito there to say that it was finished. Basically, it has passed proof. The PSF. I've never worked it out quite what it is, <laughs> but if I looked on the internet, I would find it. Other silly little things, Paul. See where this is marked E seven. Yeah. There will be a reason why. That will be an internal coding system that the barrel maker uh, would understand, basically. And you've also got here, Paul, you might have to come out a little bit. bit. See, it says Excelsior. Yeah. Excelsior High Strength Alloy Steel 20 gauge yep. or 20 caliber. That is the standard steel that Beretta are using, have been using for the barrels for the last 30 years. If you look on a very old 686 special, it'll have it written on it. If you look on a fairly new Silver Pigeon, they've, they've omitted it from the most modern Silver Pigeons, probably on a cost exercise. So, as I said with the other bit, Paul, they've omitted this Excelsior High Strength Alloy Steel. Some people would say that's because they're not using that steel anymore. I would say it's because it's an extra cost for the stamping machine and purely the time 
Uh, if it takes three minutes, if you're doing a thousand guns a day, it's going to take up a hell of a lot of time just for a yeah. bit of stamping. Now, as I said, I'm not going to do these videos in any particular order at all. But let me just, now I'll show you the breech pull. The thickness around the chamber walls here yeah. is quite thick. The reason that that is quite thick, Paul, is because the Italians have made the gun a wee little bit too heavy <laughs> and a, a wee little bit too big. Unfortunately, I'm going to put it down, Paul, and I'll show you here as well. Unfortunately, because the Italians of Bretta don't make very many cyber sides, they've approached this cyber side with the same thoughts as the over and under. Get as much weight on the gun as you can so the gun doesn't kick you. Unfortunately, with 20 bore cyber sides, they're a walked up gun. It's here, around the pistol grip, and it's not a lot. It's only probably eight, maybe 10% too big. But it's not just 10% too big here. It's 10% too big here. And I'm gonna go off the subject a little bit, Paul. This is why I do not like customization. It's been done okay. The quality of the gun, it really yeah. should have had a much better fitting pad. I almost wanna run it down myself. Yeah. What is it? It looks like felt on it there. It will be a a foam rubber of <laughs> sorts. It was a fashionable recoil pad about 10 years ago, Paul. So there's my little rant on <laughs> why I don't like customization. Some people can do very good customization, Paul. Nine out of 10 of them don't know what they're doing. So I'll be very rude there, but if you don't know what you're doing, don't touch it. The quality of the engraving that's on the side of this, Paul, it's not second to none, but bearing in mind that this is a reasonably priced gun, it's very, very, very well done. So there is one side plate with two mallard on it. I know you've already shown everybody, Paul, but you've got your base plate there with scroll. Now, let me get a pen. These little scroll ends, right? They're not, they're scroll basically. This style where it comes off of here and turns around, you will see that style on guns from most countries of the world. I don't know why, well, I do know why, it's because it looks very nice, but you can have them from Japan, you can have them from America, you can have them from Austria, you can have them from Germany and England, mm. but this scroll pattern will be on each one. Now, this is your roses, Paul, and this yeah. is your scroll. So that's not quite traditional English scroll, but it is quite close. And then on this side, what have we got? Two woodcocks? Yep. Now, can you see that the engraving is ever so slightly washed out on that one, Paul? A little bit. That's because he's shot it, basically. <laughs> That's because he's shot it. So going back to the fact it's a little bit too big, Paul, it's too big in the stock, too big in the pistol grip, and it's too big in the action, it's too big in the barrels. If you, if you weren't told that and weren't pointed that out, you'd never see it. I hope what people are getting from the videos is I want to show people what I see and it jumps out at you when you know what you're looking for. It jumps out at you like a sore thumb, basically. I just thought I would do this video, Paul, because this gun is extremely rare. Extremely, extremely rare. We also done the 486 Parallelo the other day. Yep. I do personally think that that 486 is a better gun than this. Most people that have got a 626 will say, no, the 626 is better. Yep, we're not here to have an argument, we're just here to do opinions. I've, I've done the video, Paul. Sorry, mate, let me just put it together so people can see. I've done the video to show people unusual guns. Yep. And this, this is very unusual. Very, very unusual. All right then, everybody. Thank you very much. One more thing, Paul. Yep. See these little lines here? Yeah. These are these are joins where this piece here, which is called the mono block, and these the tubes have been joined together. Yes, it looks like a slight colour difference on the video. Two different kinds of steel. Sometimes they can get them to black right. Sometimes yeah. they can't. But 
this Excelsior alloy steel, this will have one specific yeah. uh, part number, and this piece, which they've used for the monoblock, will have another. Yeah. Will have a number. It looks much different on the camera than it does like in person. Yeah, in so, person, yeah. It, it's. This is ever so slightly darker. What's it coming out on there? More yeah, blue, like purple, brown, brown. brown. Yeah, and it doesn't look like that, does no, it? No, don't at all. So, what? We're just starting with these videos, Paul, aren't we? Yeah. We're just starting with these videos, and I'm trying to show people unusual stuff. What we will do is we will move on to some more average stuff, some more <laughs> every day. And I hope what people do is they flip between the videos to see the differences. One more thing, Paul. I would have liked to have seen a long trigger guard, a long tang coming yeah. down here. The reason that they haven't done that, Paul, again, is that arch enemy of the gun trade, the price. <laughs> so they've done everything else, but they've missed off just here. Thanks very much, people. Let's keep doing them.